Welcome to Supernatural Life. I'm Patricia King. I serve you as your host on today's program. And our topic is on the grace of God. Oh, amazing grace. Mm. How sweet that sound. And with us today, we have Robert Henderson teaching on this subject from your brand new book, um, The Power of God's Grace. Yes. And it's just an awesome uh, uh, topic and a much needed topic yes. in this hour. So just to jump right into it, what is grace and what is it not? <laughs> well, you know, I think that gr grace, obviously, I mean, we've all heard, heard the definition, God's unmerited favor, that kind of thing. I, I tried to actually stay away from that because it, we hear it so much. It's, sure. like, it's like water off the duck's back. But when I think about grace, the, one of the first things I think about is Noah. Because a lot of people don't think that God was gracious in the Old Testament. But he's the same God, sure. whether it's the Old Testament or the New. And the Bible says of Noah that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And I remember reading that one day and I thought, okay, that doesn't mean that God just decided to show Noah grace. It means that Noah was able to see the grace that was in God's eyes. Mm, beautiful. In other words, he saw the way God was looking at him. Oh, beautiful. And grace is the way God looks at us. God, wow. God looks at us in a certain way. And when we, when we discover his gracious gaze at us, see, mm. I, think that that's, I think that that's what broke Peter's heart. Oh. Whenever he, yeah. When he denied the Lord uh, three times mm. and the rooster crowed, and it says the Lord turned and looked at him. The Lord wasn't turning and saying, you, exactly. how dare you do this to me exactly. after all I've done? No, it was his, his eyes were full of grace and it broke Peter's heart because that's what grace does. Yeah. It actually, it actually brings us to a deep surrender because the Bible says we love him because he, he first, first loved, loved us. us. His love actually transforms us right. uh, into the image that he desires us to be. And to me, that's what grace is. That's, that's awesome. what grace is. And of course, the other thing is, I think that, that some, in my opinion, and today, today uh, there is somewhat of a, a distorted view of what grace is uh, because it's almost like we can live any old way we want to live mm. and it's okay. But the real grace of God, according to Titus chapter two, it says, mm. it says the grace has appeared uh, that brings salvation to all men. So this is the grace that teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live godly. We should live righteously in this present yeah, world. Exactly. In other words, real grace will push us to holiness because the grace of God that I received, it won't let me live in my sin. Right. It won't. It won't. It, it won't. won't. It won't. I'm miserable. Exactly. I have to deal with my stuff. <laughs> it empowers you to go in the other direction, abso actually. Absolutely. But, but it makes you want to. Right. Because it's the very nature of God in absolutely. you. Absolutely. See, God's, uh, His grace brings His nature yeah. uh, into us that makes me want to live the way he wants me to live rather than the way my flesh would want it's me to so go. It's so good. I did a study on grace, you know, a long time ago, and I was just so blessed by one of the definitions. It's just sort of Strong's Concordance, mm. so it wasn't a deep yeah, study. Yeah. But it says that it's God's divine influence upon your heart. Yeah, that's so good. And it's like, I remember when I was born again, the night that I was born again, I came to the Lord really broken. Like, I had nothing to offer him. Mm. And I just felt so dirty dirty and so slimy and and you know I saw myself as having an evil core sort of thing so I I just went to the Lord and I said I don't even know if you'd want me but mm -hmm. you know you know those people up the street at the Bible study <laughs> they said that you came in when you asked so I just wondering if you could wow. come into me in the same way he did not hesitate he came in with so much love it was like liquid love but from that moment my life was influenced mm. no one had to tell me even to turn away from sin yes the grace led me in a different direction. Yes. And it was so beautiful. He influenced my life to this day. And we're talking, you know, well over 40 years later, you know, I'm still walking in this amazing influence upon my life. Oh, so and whenever I feel like, you know, wow, I need to understand something more, or I need to have the power to do something better. I just say, God, increase your grace. And every time he does it, and I just want you to know that if you have heard anything that says the grace of God will enable you to do whatever you want and it doesn't matter if you sin, 
that is not grace. People right. who say that have not even, I don't think they've experienced grace That's, that because either. it's just the yeah. opposite. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. You know, um, I remember years ago, a lady came into my office. I mean, and and she knew nothing. She knew nothing. She'd been coming to the services. She knew nothing. She came in. She wanted to give her heart to the Lord. I mean, because we talked a little bit. I prayed with her. She was living with a guy in, you know, in sin, not married, whatever, because that's what people do. Right. I started, now, because I thought, if I'm going to be a real man of God, I need to tell her, you need to move out. And so I started to tell her, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't you tell her that. He said, that's not your business. You leave that to me. Wow. Within le or less than a week later, she calls for another appointment. She comes in and she says, she says, I can't explain why, but I don't feel good about my situation anymore. Exactly. I think I need to move out. Because see, she received the real grace of God and it actually pushed her to want to to want to live a different life. And I never told her it's a word. God awesome. actually told me not to. He said, you leave it alone. Because whenever she received the grace of God, it began to put in her a desire to live a holy and life. And the apostle Paul knew about that. He's called the apostle of grace, actually. Yes. But I mean, he understood the grace that changed him from someone who was bound by religion, could only see through religious vis vision, into a man of God who knew Jesus Christ and who was empowered by Christ to do the works of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And almost every epistle he started and ended in many too, grace and peace, grace and peace yeah. be multiplied unto yes. you. And it's like he knew the power of growth for an individual. He knew the power of grace. That was the key ingredient. You yes. need the grace and you need the shalom of God in order to grow. And Amen. so he decreed it and proclaimed it. And we need to do that over each other. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I one of the other things I talk about in the book is grace being the generosity of God. Yes. Because in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the apostle Paul talks about putting into oh, them the it. grace yes. of God that was put, up, put that was put in the Macedonian right. church. And it was actually about them actually giving. Exactly. That when grace came into their life, it released a generosity out of them because they are receiving from the generosity of God. Oh, and, so, and, and so I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, just giving money. Sure. Well, obviously no, no. we should do that. But that that's to me, that's not the issue. The issue is it is his generosity toward us. And I cannot be touched by his generosity and, not and it not gen unlock yeah. generosity in me. Yeah. And, and see, to me, that's what happened. Um, I think it's Luke chapter eight, where that the women, all these women that had great substance, mm -hmm. the Bible says, it says there had been demons cast out of them. They'd all experienced deliverance. They'd been healed. They were they were serving Jesus. They were following, and they ministered to him of his substance, of their substance, because it um, his grace in their right. life unlocked a generosity out of their own life. And it even works with service too. I Absolutely. remember. Absolutely. After I got saved that night, I stayed up all night. I just wept. I was so in love. I just couldn't get over mm -hmm. his love, right? I get up in the morning and I couldn't wait to go give this gospel to others. Wow. And so I went over to my neighbor's house, you know, when they turned on the light and it was still dark out. I went over and shared the gospel with them. I couldn't wait because of that generosity, because That's so right. much love had been given to me. I just wanted to share it with everyone else. And grace, absolutely, grace. You know, if you are all dry and, you know, feeling, you know, like you're in kind of a spiritual wilderness, just ask for more grace because his divine influence, his favor, his goodness will come upon you and you'll just start to to give out of that. It's so amazing. Yes. Yes. You know, the the the. The, gra the grace of God is an inexhaustible thing. One of the other things I talk about in the book is that grace is God's grease. And I grew up in a, in a farming, you know, um, country type uh, uh, atmosphere. So we, we worked on vehicles, cars, right. different things. And I found, you know, what, what you discover is unless there, uh, something is lubricated, one of the gears and the motions of the motor moves, it's going to heat up and it's going to cause friction and it's, you're going to have a breakdown. But the grease actually stops that friction wow. from coming. And so I talk about grace uh, grace being like grease in our life, that when we've received the grace of God uh, into our lives, it's like Psalms 23, he anoints my head with oil wow. so that there is a lubrication that comes into our life that makes 
all the stuff that would normally cause things to heat up and actually cause a breakdown, we actually see that not happen oh, because so of beautiful. the grace of God that's coming into our lives. So beautiful. You know, you mentioned generosity a few moments ago, and in the book of Corinthians, um, Paul's writing, and he says that all grace may abound to you, yes, right? Yes. So that you will have all sufficiency in everything. That's right. So it's like when God's grace is upon you, you actually receive abundance yes. with that grace, right? Absolutely. Abundance of his goodness, abundance of love, abundance of substance so that you'll have enough to give into every good work, it says. Absolutely. It's just amazing the way grace works. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's not just barely enough to get by. Right. It's, it's, it's an abundance. He, he come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so many, so many Christians don't live that life because I don't believe, as you're saying, they receive the abundance of grace right. that is ours. Because that's the other thing. There are varying levels of grace. Mm -hmm. And the more we walk with God, the more we will come into those varying and ever-increasing levels of grace well, that are operating in our life. Well, grace is being offered to you right now in great abundance, even greater levels than you've ever known. We're going to talk more about that after this break. <laughs> 